Welcome everyone to this exclusive interview with a very special guest of mine. I'm Lou Sky Sapphire, owner of Kagra Sanctuary, Janice Universe, and a host of other fan sites. And with me today is renowned actress, singer, songwriter, dancer, and voice actress, the living legend herself, Janice Jod, star of popular series like Inuyasha, My Little Pony, X-Men Evolution, Baby Looney Tunes, Edna and Eddie, and various Marvel and DC projects. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for inviting me. This is exciting. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I have been a long time fan of yours. I mean, we met, what, um, in 2006, I believe? Uh, we, we ran into each other. I found your website around that time. Yeah, and, it's been a long yeah. time. It's great. It is, because some of you uh, listeners may not know this, but me and Janice have been talking for a very long time now. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're in cahoots, so to speak. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're um, secrets. We're, yeah, of course, we're buddy buddy here, and we've been friends for a long time. And and honestly, uh, I've been listening to her work way before meeting her, though. I mean, early old anime and and cartoons. So she's been around a long time, and she's a real professional in the game. So what we're gonna do today is interview her and go over her entire career, her voice roles, and maybe learn a thing or two. So, are you ready, Janice? I am ready. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Of course. Uh, how's life been as of late? Oh, it's been great. Really, really busy, actually. I've got new projects on the go, so it's been uh, extremely busy, actually. And for you listeners out there, those projects will keep on hush-hush for now. Unless Janice herself wants to go over them with you. Uh, will that be possible, or do you want to keep it hush-hush? Well, some of them I can, and some, some of them I have some under contract. So I'll okay. be able to tell you a bit. All right. Uh, uh, at the end of the show, would you like to do some of that? Sure. Fantastic. All right. So um, first thing I want to start off with, of course, can you tell us a little bit about your early life before uh, the legend of Janice Shaw started? Okay. Um, well, I was, also, I was always... Uh, to singing, dancing, and acting. I always wanted to be a performer. And uh, I was doing a lot of ballet, jazz ballet, singing in bands, theater. And then, of course, I have to make ends meet by being a receptionist, you know, <laughs> jobs like that. got to do whatever you can. That's right. And um, it was there when a lot of people kept saying to me, oh, you've got such a great voice, you should really get into voice acting. And I hadn't really ever thought about it, but mind you, when I was younger, I did a lot of puppet shows and voices, but I never actually thought of doing it as a career. So I started auditioning in addition to what I was doing at the time with theater, and then I started getting bookings, and I discovered that I just loved the industry. So it started from there, and I, I started, uh, I believe that was in 93, I started with Conan the Adventurer, and I played Jesmond. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Clear as day. <laughs> yeah. That was my very first voiceover role, and I was just so excited. But at, but at the time, I didn't even know that was you. And uh, these days, you know, I try to look back on who did these voice roles. I grew up as a child, and, of course, your name came up. And, I, well, I knew your later works after that. But when I found out it was you, I was like, oh, my God, that was her. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's um, a journey of discovery for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that was a great show to actually bite your teeth into the animation world because there was so much walla. There, were, there was so much physical activity that we had to do with our voice. So I learned a lot from that. Well, would you say that, you know, when you're in the recording studio, uh, I mean, we're going to go over this later, but I have one quick question. When you're in the recording studio, um, acting out that scene is a better way to actually execute the lines. Yeah, you have to, you're, you're acting it out really more in your head because you can't move a lot yeah. in front of the microphone. But, um, you know, with Jasmine, I had to do flips and throws, and it could be a shuriken that I'm throwing, or it could be a sword. So each item has a different type of impact and a different sound. So you have to be aware of that and make sure it sounds real. 
Exactly. And um, but uh, going back to your earlier life again, what was it like um, being in front of like when you were a little girl? I imagine you watched cartoons as well, or yeah. or any or any or radio, and you're like, huh, I want to uh, mimic some of those voices. So you take those cartoon characters that you watch and you try doing their voice. Did you, were there any moments like that in your childhood? Oh yeah, yeah. I was trying to imitate voices all the time and and singing as well, trying to sing in character. I found that fascinating. And I just, it took me a while, you know, when I was, when I was little, it took me a while to understand that, that people actually voice those characters. Because, you know, when you're, when you're really, really small, you think that that ca- character actually exists. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I was fooled like that. And it's good <laughs> because you're, you're, you're caught up in the illusion. That's right. Yes. And you must... Yeah, and you must have been caught up in the illusion, too, because it fascinated you, these characters, and they made you laugh so hard, and, you know, you wanted to, like, oh, I want to I either be them or sound like them. I don't know what, which one, but <laughs> I just want to be part of the experience somehow. Yeah, that's right. Exactly right. Um, did you have any favorite characters? Um, in terms of ch- uh, childhood characters? Yeah, that you tried to mimic? Uh, when I was a little kid, actually, um, I tried doing Bugs Bunny, uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, I, not well, but I, I tried. <laughs> um, mo- mo- yeah, mostly anything by Disney and the Looney Tunes, because at that time, I didn't watch anime just yet. Uh, but around maybe from uh, the age of three to age of seven, I was watching nonstop Disney and uh, Looney Tunes. Uh, cartoons and I would always uh, mimic their voices because they sounded so funny to you. So it's like, oh, I want to sound like that, you know? Hey, what's up, Mac? And <laughs> and and oh, oh, so yeah, that those good, those those kind of voices they they just um, resonate with you, and you just want to mimic those. It, it, you can't help it because like it's like hearing a funny sounding person. You want to just mimic them. That's so yeah, right. that's, uh, right. <laughs> that's pretty good, by the way. No thanks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's. I don't think it, uh, to me. I'm not a voice actor, obviously, but I think of my my impersonations of them like mocking them almost. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that that makes it uh, makes the performance a lot better for me. Anyway, it makes me you know get into character better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's different in anime, of course, because when I got into Dragon Ball, that was my very first anime ever. Uh, in the age of five, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, oh, you know, these characters, you know, they're Japanese and they sound Japanese. I don't know what they're supposed to sound in English yet. And Dragon Ball wouldn't come out in America for another <laughs> another couple of years at at that point. Yeah. Because it, yeah, because it was still it was eighty nine, and Dragon Ball didn't come out until nineteen ninety five, I believe. So. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to remember what. The first show I did in anime was, um, and that would have been in the 90s, I think. Oh, man. Uh, unfortunately, your resume, it's like, uh, they're all, you know, I know your whole resume, but they're not, you know, timeline ordered. So I can't tell which one was your first. <laughs> I know, and in, and in IMDb, they, they do it from the year it started in the Japanese version. Um, Felicia was fun. Oh, from uh, <laughs> Dark Stalkers. Yeah. Felicia is a very popular character these days uh-huh. because you know, we have a big fan base for cat girls, and and your name is always brought up in a lot of those discussions. By the way, for the anime series. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Did you ever see uh, Maisani Koku? Yes, I love Maisani Koku, and honestly, um, it was you know after Rama, one of the best series ever. I loved you as a Kimmy and and Maisani Koku. I thought she was really awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and you know all of um all of the anime by Rumiko Takahashi were always well done and dubbed and of course we're going to discuss this later with a certain character of mine but <laughs> okay. favorite character mm-hmm. but um moving on um how was your experience in theater i mean i i heard you talk about your theater experience on another podcast but you never really went into detail with it uh what was your experience like there and was there any competition or or people that supported you what happened uh, well, I started doing theater productions through uh, my ballet, actually. We did, mm-hmm. we did a show every year. So I started when I was about five. And then um, I started doing a lot of musical theater after that. And, yeah, there was tons of competition. Uh, um, 
not only in musical theater, but in dancing. I, I specialized in jazz ballet as well. And it was very highly competitive in both fields. So, it must have been. Yeah, yeah. Even in the voiceover industry, I mean, it's hugely competitive. So you have to just find how you're unique and try and present that in a way that makes you stand out. At the time, you were just uh, following your dreams and passion with uh, theater. And it's, it wasn't just like, oh, here's another way to, you know, for me to, um, you know, do something. No, this was something you really wanted to do. Yeah. And you wanted, yeah, and you wanted to show, you know, show your skills to everybody and your own way, of course. Yeah, that's right. I just loved performing and uh, singing, you know, as well. And so I did, I took every opportunity I could to to get out there and do that. Were, were you a natural with uh, singing or do you have to go to classes and get it polished, so to speak? I did both, actually. I could always sing. I started writing songs when I was nine. So I was always singing and, uh, you know, I was in choir at school and in church choir, and so <laughs> it just went on from there. Yeah, and weddings. And weddings especially. <laughs> <laughs> you must have sung for a lot of couples in your lifetime. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. Oh, that's great, but as long as you have a love for theater, I mean, you love to shine, and that's a good thing. Um, but how was your first experience with animated cartoons? I mean, I know we just talked about your childhood, but um, after you finished theater and your early life uh, of um, singing and dancing and, and performing, uh, when did you get reintroduced with cartoons? Because even at a certain age, some adults like to abandon cartoons, but I'm pretty sure you didn't because you're a fun-loving person, Janice. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, I was always interested in, in animation and, um, you know, had my own little favorite shows that I'd watch all the time, and it, I don't think I ever fell out of it. Um, but uh, I'm just so glad that I actually found a career in it because it's just, it's the most amazing career anyone could have, really. It's just like it playing is. all the time. <laughs> it's like bringing out your inner child again because I'm pretty sure that everything else you do is, you know, you know, uh, you know, you tend to, you know, got to be serious, you know, you know, got to be a grown up with everything else you do. But this is your escapism, you think? I mean, aside from your usual interest in life, but do you think that uh, voice acting and cartoons was your escapism at some point? Yeah, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've developed my own little characters, too, that, uh, that I'm promoting, actually. Did I tell you about that? I told you. About, uh, that. about your own characters? Oh, yeah. You yeah. told me about yeah. that. Yeah. But... About Coochie Coo, the panda. And, that, and that's amazing because, you know, for someone to to take their OCs. Uh, okay, the term OC is for, you know, for people like me, fans and all that, but OC means original character. Mm -hmm. So you took your OCs and you made them public finally. And, and we're going to talk about that later, Magic of Think and all that, but it must have been a dream to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was exciting. And it's <laughs> exciting to actually try and develop the character and the personality and what kind of little vocal influences they have. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, oh my. Well, we'll talk about that later because they they all sound so so cute and amazing. But um, but the next question is, um, can you give me some memories of your earlier roles? I mean, when you started out in the '90s, as you said, uh, can you explain to me how it was going into the studio for the first time and meeting uh, the production and staff and all that? Sure. Um, yeah, the first one I the first animated series that I was involved in was Conan the Adventure. So that was really exciting. I was I was nervous, and uh, it was my very first time doing that. And so I got in there, and the cast was just amazing, and and uh, the director was great, and um, it was really really great learning experience. At the same time, getting paid for something. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> so I learned so much from the director. And then from there, I did uh, Botsmaster. Mm -hmm, I remember Botsmaster. And um, let's see. Oh, I did Sky Server for Strike Force. So that was kind of all in the same time frame. 
and uh, that was that was really really uh, interesting because well with Bots Master I got to play more of a villain, but in Conan and Sky Surfer it was more hero, a hero type strong, especially Sky Surfer Strike Force. That's right. I mean the well, into, well talking about that. Let's get this question out there. Do you prefer uh, playing the hero or the villain? <laughs> Sometimes you can have more fun with one or the other, but what do you think? I think that they're both really interesting to play, but the villains always have more layers to their characters, so you can explore so many different things with the villain, whereas the hero tends to be more just one way. Yeah, just like, you know, straight, you know... Um straight to the point and, you know, more uh, by the book. So there's not much to him or her, but the villains, there's more to them, and they have a goal to set out to. They fail eventually, but <laughs> yeah, yeah at, least they, at least they try, and they're, they're, they're more ambitious, I think. And that's sad because they fail. So it's like, yeah. oh, you try so hard, but you can't make it. <laughs> yeah, and then I also like the humorous ones, too, like in Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Yes, the over-the-top one. <laughs> Those were pretty fun to do. Oh, God, those are amazing. I love Ed, Ed and Eddie. It's a nice little show. And it uh, should still be on TV. I mean, uh, Cartoon Network constantly just, you know, changes new series every so often. But we'll talk about that one again later. God, there's so many topics today. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but um, it's nice of your experiences were, were positive oh, in your you early. Know, another uh, fantastic experience I had was doing the adoption stories for Discovery Health Channel. We ended up doing 70 episodes. And then we won an Emmy Award for that. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that was a really amazing experience because I did the narration for each episode. So I got to follow each couple that was trying to adopt a child in whichever country they were going to. And just the experiences and the emotional things that they have to go through to be able to oh, yeah. adopt, it was, it was quite interesting and emotional and oh i never listened to those uh, i should but i'm pretty sure you were touched by the whole experience as you were narrating it oh yeah yeah it was amazing and your later experiences after that um after a while you became less nervous of course in the, in the studio oh and yeah, yeah. oh yeah just that first time because you know when it's new and you're not really sure what to expect when you're in the studio but yeah every after that i was fine <laughs> but I wonder how many um, takes did you have to do for certain scenes? I mean, I guess some of the directors behind the scenes uh, want you to do this a certain way. And I'm pretty sure uh, you had to do a couple of takes again and again and again how the scream is done. Uh, it's called Foley. Uh, Foley is a term for, you know, sounds like, ah, or, ah, or I'm running, <laughs> you know, stuff, you know. Do you have to do grunts and moans a lot, too? And yeah, like if you're running a certain distance and then you have to jump, do a cartwheel, um, then you have to make sure that you're timing it in the right way and you're making the correct sounds to make it real. That's so right. if you weren't, then you'd have to do another take, of course. And then same with throwing weapons. Is it a short throw? Is it a long throw? Is it a big weapon, heavy weapon, light weapon? Exactly. Did you, and did you find yourself uh, having to do those takes a lot or not really? Well, You always got it the, on the first try. The uh, very first show that I did, the one that I was talking about before, Conan, that one had so much of that in there. <laughs> everybody in the cast was doing it many, many times. <laughs> so we learned a lot from that one show. <laughs> Oh my, well, it's a learning experience, you know, with your first role and everything, so it tends to happen. Yeah. But, you know, that's unfortunate, though, how, well, you said the rest of the cast. I guess that was one of the few shows you did see the rest of the cast members, because, unfortunately, for North American dubbing, the uh, the cast members usually never meet each other. And unlike in ja Japan, where they're, they're all in one room, here, I don't think you ever met some of the other voice actors in, in the series that you're doing, right? Well, in anime... Uh, you're there by yourself. But in the other animated series for the states that, that is not Japanese anime, then you are in a room with everybody else. Uh, so you met everybody on Ed and Eddie, for example. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh my God! <laughs> oh, actually, there is an except exception there with Ed Ed Nettie. The director had Ed Ed Ned, or sorry, <laughs> Ed Ed and Eddie. They were in one session, and then the rest of the cast came in after together. Wow! And recorded. Yeah, that was uh, different. But any other show that I've been on that was not anime, all the cast was there. Yeah, that's good because you all form a family. And I think maybe maybe not, but do you think the, your performance is enhanced better when you see the others around you and you hear their work too? Yeah, I do. I really do. Is it such I know. a play? Because like in anime, you're so lonely in that room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the solitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but as long as you but you still pull it off anyway, because of course with my next question, um, this is the biggest example of how you pulled off a one room recording solo by yourself. And okay, for this next question, I have to first say ahead of time, your voice as Kagura, your role as Kagura is the greatest I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, thank you. But, I mean, you voiced her like nobody's business, Janice, and we're going to discuss why. But the first opening question for you is how were you cast as Kagura and Kanna? Well, I auditioned for both characters at the same time. Um, I, I just thought with Kagura, I wanted to interpret a strong character that was manipulative with some kind of sexiness. That's right. <laughs> and with Kana, they they wanted something, of course, completely different. And I was trying out various voices, and they wanted something a bit creepy. So I tried to do my version of that. <laughs> oh, Kana, me and my friends like to joke around with Kana a lot because uh, with your perform your performance is a big inspiration for that because we have like this role play where we act like a bunch of villains from different series and. Uh, they hang out with each other now because you know they you know they're washed up and old and they can't <laughs> they can't beat the good guys anymore. So they formed this club together and, and just hang around. And Kana is actually one of them. Oh. So every time she will run around and you know she you know they would they're playing they're, they're playing like um poker game or something, and <laughs> and and she's like uh, or a card game and she's like uh, read them and weep boys whole house. <laughs> oh darn. <laughs> <laughs> and her voice, her her facial expression would never change, and that's the kind of character she is, you know, kind of quiet. Yeah. And yeah, so you captured that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna come to some of your parties. <laughs> you should. We're always boy, we're always play voice acting, I guess. <laughs> but uh, Kagura is the character I I can't really emulate too well. Obviously, I don't have that sexiness, but. Um, <laughs> But I have to say, I was touched by the character, not 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 so much because she's first of all physically attractive, but also her voice and her character itself. I think you made it all work because originally, she was she sounds like a very young girl in the, the Seiyu's version. Yeah. Uh, and you came along and you made her sound more like a temptress, a more of um, you know, um, a, more like a more like a real sorceress and. And with the deep voice and the alluring, you know, talk and all that, and made her very seductive, and I thought that was really sexy. Oh, and <laughs> so, with her uh, in the recording studio and all the episodes you've read, do you feel like over time you you grown attached to the character? Oh yeah, definitely. It, it was hard to do that final scene. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what do you think of her character in general, and do you, can you relate to her, or uh, do you think that everything she did was indeed um, the right thing to do? Well, I think the way that I look at the character is that she had so many conflicting emotions, and she was she she was kind of trapped. So I felt kind of sorry for her. Exactly, I feel that she was um, really trying to set out a goal for herself to become free. Yeah, and and she just couldn't do it. I mean, she was just you know had a ball and chain uh, around her called Naraku. So exactly, <laughs> and, yeah. And I think we can all relate to her is that we want to be free and do and you know become our own person in some way. And it's funny because she's a villain. I mean, shouldn't we boo? We should we should be booing her? No, mm -hmm. not this time because this is um you know there's no black and white with her. I mean, this is shades of gray here. She is yeah, she's a villain. Yeah, but but if she wasn't you know. 
Atasha Naraku, she would be off doing her own thing. Yeah. It was like she could care less about Inuyasha and his friends. So <laughs> she wants a life that's her own. That's right. Yeah. So I really like her. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you yourself um, uh, became really attached to her over time, and that final scene. You know, we won't talk about that too much because it's kind of a spoiler out there. Yeah. But for those those who know what we're talking about, you know exactly what she's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and now for your work on camera, I mean, you also did um, shows like Andromeda. Uh, but did you actually show up on camera? Because I've seen some some of those clips and. You were like hidden, but we didn't get to actually see you in Andromeda. I know, that was so disappointing. I was so yeah. excited when I got that part, and it was a scene with Kevin Sorbo. Oh, and legend. I, I arrive on set, and I'm thinking, oh, I get to play this alien, and they're going to put this cool makeup on me, right? I, I walk in, Kevin Sorbo isn't even there. Um, uh. Then apparently all the aliens on that particular episode wear these gowns with long red veils over their face, their sheer red veils, so you couldn't yeah. really see my face. Yeah, I know. When I saw, that's the only clip of your live action work I've ever seen, and when I saw I'm like, why does she look like a fancy uh, Halloween ghost? You're sort of just yeah. covered up, and we can't see you. Yeah. And, and Kevin Sorbo, he's not there. Oh, he's, I mean, he, he's not there. They recorded his footage, but he's not with you. Like, that's disappointing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to basically do the dialogue with a woman there that was just reading the lines. So that was my that was my time there. But hey, it was still fun. Yeah, it was still fun. At least you could say you were on the same show as Hercules. So <laughs> yeah, and I did a lot of uh, of voiceovers uh, for Andromeda too, for various you know aliens. Yeah, according to the list, your um, your voice roles were a secretary, uh, Pax Magellanic Avatar on camera, Dawn, and Clarion of Loss, and and Kavava. That's right. And also for live action, you did other voice roles. But let's go over all the on camera stuff. I mean, uh, according to this, uh, double exposure. You were a wife. <laughs> right. Um, did we see you for how long in that? Um, well, I think the one in Outer Limits is, is w the one where I have more of a scene where you can uh, see more of me. Now, how many episodes were you in Outer Limits? Because I have the box sets. Oh, really? Oh, I, Yeah, I, I could just, find you. I was just in one. Oh, you were a counselor, supposedly. <laughs> yes. I was a counselor. <laughs> I got it. Oh, man, I need to remember the episode. Um, it doesn't say which episode exactly you were in. I could check IMDb later, but I got to check those again. I didn't know you were in Outer Limits. must have crossed my mind. <laughs> um, you were also a nurse in the X-Files. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have some boxes. But have that some was boxes. a really quick um, one-liner, you know. Oh, you just came in for a couple of seconds? Yeah. And said something to David or something? I think I was just running down the hall. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> now, as you know, Janice, uh, one of the most popular shows right now, as of late, is My Little Pony. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah well, well, more specifically, the newest one, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Um, but before we talk about the ones you did, I want to ask, is there any good reason why the people from uh, the My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic crew never contacted you to reprise your role as Pinkie Pie? Well, they wanted a different type of voice. Oh. Yeah. I thought you had that voice, though. Because <laughs> when, when I hear it, they all sound sugary. And like, well, that's how the old one was. I guess they sound a little bit more younger these days. But you do young voices all the time, so there's no excuse. <laughs> well, I think, you know, sometimes they get new people in a production company that want to change things up. And things like that happen. So... It's just part of the work. Yeah. yeah. Well, Unfortunately. Yeah, I was disappointed. Yeah, you know, the new Pinkie Pie, good, but not as good as you. <laughs> but um, but my uh, little cousin has all your work on DVD. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, she's a huge My Little Pony fan before this new one came out. So when I want to hear your work, I go to her place. <laughs> so um, 
Uh, can you share some of your memories uh, doing My Little Pony? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, they were all great memories. We also did the, besides the animated series, we also did the stage show. So they had hired actors to, of course, put on the costumes and do like a musical theater production. And then we did the voiceovers and the songs. So that was quite exciting. And then we had the toys and um, also the video games. Oh, yes, the video games. And you did a lot of video game work, too. But um, this My Little Pony live show, uh, was that ever released on video or anything? Or was that just like a one-shot deal? It was released on video, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, you yeah. can see it probably on Amazon and IMDb and, and that. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I can get for my little cousin because she's crazy about it. Yeah, you should get her that. It's a really good show. Oh, God, her birthday's coming up, too, in November. Oh, thanks for the idea, Janice. You are a lifesaver. November what? Uh, sixth. Sixth, okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be delicious. But, <laughs> but um, when you were cast as Pinkie Pie, um, what was your first impression of the character? My first impression before I got the role or after? Oh, uh, after. I guess... I always felt Pinkie Pie was a leader, but had this real innocence to her, you know, and, and she would just um, see everything as if she saw it for the first time. But yet, she was smart, and if somebody wasn't really quite getting it, she would say, hey, come on, you know, this is how, it's, this is, how it is. So, yeah. It's so she, she wasn't afraid to go out there and, and be a leader. <laughs> Do you see yourself like that too? You being informative and being sort of a leader to others as well. I mean, I think you're kind of doing that already with the, mag uh, with the magic of think and trying to inspire others to be more positive. Ah, see, there's a connection, par drawn parallels here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> there, there, I just I just love uh, when every uh, the planets align like that because it's like that was perfect for you then. <laughs> it's like Pinkie Pie was made for you. Yeah, anyway. it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, uh, oh, your video game roles. Um, I've heard you a lot in the Inuyasha RPG, uh, Secret of the Cursed Mast. Yeah. Uh, which which is an original story with um, all the gang. And, of course, you as Kagura come, came back. And I recently put up on YouTube, actually, a video of your entire work from that game. Oh, yeah, and, thanks. Yeah, I did. And <laughs> it's just funny how, you know, you, uh, you really put more emphasis on the attacks in that game. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional a lot, really. That's a place! <laughs> You're like, you screamed it louder than usual, like, wow. <laughs> Oh, you know, because with those games, they get you to do a short, medium, and loud, and then so that so you never know which one they're going to take. Oh, so you do like uh, oh, and it mostly you did the loud, right? <laughs> I guess that's what they mainly picked. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, that's amazing, and uh, it was a really fun game, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. Um, it is, yeah. I really enjoyed it, and uh, well, ca well, the whole car the whole cast looks like little um, little uh, kid versions of themselves. We call them chibis, and <laughs> or super deformed versions. Of <laughs> but you know, Kagura looked really cute in that. <laughs> um, now let's talk about your more current voice roles. I mean, you did things like um, Hulk versus, which I thought was really awesome, by the way. Oh, and, thanks. And wow, uh, uh, let's start with. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We're we gonna say. I loved fighting Wolverine. Oh, yeah. yeah oh that God. was awesome. And, and versus Wolverine, um, you were playing Lady Deathstrike. That's right. And how much fun did you have do, uh, voicing Deathstrike? Oh, that was so much fun. Everybody <laughs> was in the room that was in the show, so it was just, it was really amazing. <laughs> you got to, like, like say, oh, I'm, I'm kicking your butt in this scene, and you, know, you just, you know, bam, you know, oh, yeah. start, oh, wow. <laughs> and it was fun to see the energy. It was happening it, with with everybody there in the room. God, they must have been. Re they were really into it. Oh yeah. I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. 
and the whole, the, I mean, both movies uh, had a lot of fighting in it, and that's the whole point of the Versus series. And but what people forget about is your role as Hela in um, Versus Thor. Like you know, you get praise for your Death Strike role, but how about Hela? I thought you did pretty good as her too. Oh. It, it was kind of it was kind of return back to Kagra actually, with the you know alluring voice and all that. Yeah, I was trying to be a little bit more godlike with that. Oh yeah. But um yeah, that was a very interesting role too and and uh I tried to make her very strong. Yeah, she is cuz she's um an entity. So you and they and they put some echo to your voice too to make it sound more godlike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really awesome. Um are there any other roles you're doing right now um as we speak? Uh, Cartoon-wise, not anime. We just wrapped another 13 of Strawberry Shortcake. So I play Orange Blossom on Strawberry Shortcake. And that's been doing really well. I believe that's our third season. Third season? Oh, it's very successful then. Yeah. Oh, wow. Excellent. Um, Are there any shows that you wish you were a part of um, that you see on TV? You know, some of the newer ones, like maybe the new My Little Pony you want to be part of, or Adventure Time, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. I would love to be on the new My Little Pony, too, for sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Like, you know, bring back a veteran voice actors just for, for yeah. one day, episode. Yeah, something, right? Yeah, I wish they'll do it someday, because you're really a natural. Thank you. <laughs> um, also, your, um, your singing career we want to go over now. Sure. You know, have, uh, I have uh, my original songs in ten movies now. Uh, you had one in Karate Dog because I remember watching that one. <laughs> I think. Karate Dog. I think Karate Dog. Oh no, you did a voiceover in that, not a song. Yeah, that's your, right. Yeah, yeah. Your songs were in which films? Uh, they were in Smart Cookies, Health Nuts, All She Wants for Christmas, Making Mister Right. Blonde and Blonder, Past Obsessions, uh, a new one coming out, American Mary, and another one, Love at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, and those are snippets of my songs that they're using as background music in those particular shows. Mm, they use them in like a, you know one scene. Yeah. Or two, <laughs> where they just played in the background while the character is wandering around or whatnot. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and uh, you watched all these movies uh, back. Uh, um, uh, here's a good question. Um, a lot of actors get asked this, and most of the time they say, no, we never get the DVD for the work we did. Do you end up getting uh, a DVD for your work, or do you have to buy it yourself? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Are you referring to the music or to the animation? Oh, I'm just referring to just the animation. Animation. Um, sometimes we get the DVDs, and sometimes we don't. Uh, I guess. So it depends on the show and company. Oh, so it depends. Okay. Yeah, that's amazing, because most actors say they never get one. It's like everything's on their contract except getting their own DVD mm-hmm. <laughs> of the work they were in. <laughs> so, yeah that's, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I always wanted to ask you that, because like, it always went through my mind <laughs> um but back back to music though um when you first re- okay to me i don't know if you had any albums before that but of course my first was the home sweet home and santa's mine ho ho uh single of yours that's right yeah. from from 2006 and uh how did that come about well i you know i kept hearing these christmas songs every year they keep playing the same ones over and over again and there was nothing really that was humorous or funny about some of them. So I thought, wouldn't that be interesting if I could create some songs that had some uniqueness and humor in there, like Santa's Mine Ho Ho? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just ended up developing to a full And uh, yeah, I started off with those two songs that you named and then ended up uh, finishing a whole bunch of other songs and creating an album of just Christmas songs. And so that was really a lot of fun to do. And and uh, I still get, you know, 
radio airplay every year with those, which is nice. And um, but I, what I really want to do though is some videos to them. Oh God, I, that's something I've been asking all this time or requesting. Like, Virginia, could you please do some videos with them? I mean, with Dreamers, we saw you a little bit in the beginning, and then we saw that really nice slideshow after that. But we'd like to see you in the whole video someday. Is that maybe possible in the future? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's yeah, you know that's... the music industry though is is a little difficult because it's it it is I must say it's hard to. Um, generate money from that because of the fact you can so easily download things for free and true yeah, yeah so it's it's hard but I'm working on it I mean even if, even if it was just you just sitting in the middle of a room just with your microphone I and mean, that's all we need really <laughs> we just want to see you in some way your fans and everyone else, everyone else who supports you oh, okay I mean it doesn't have to be too fancy like you know like a Lady Gaga video, <laughs> it's just yeah, as long as we see you and just doing your thing. I mean, that's all. You know, uh, I think that's you know simplistic enough. You know, it would be really cool if fans could help me, like contribute in some way to my video. Like somehow, if I could piece something together with me and them. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. We can we can make an announcement, and I can get people uh, for the cause. Okay. Yeah. So you hear that, everybody? Uh, well, we'll go over uh, all the websites and all the information you need to know, the contact information for Janice herself, and you can help uh, her little idea that you just came up with. <laughs> and after that's done, uh, we'll be able to hopefully get a video in the near future. Yeah, that would be perfect. That would be excellent. Wow. <laughs> but um, before we continue on, um, of course, your albums, uh, well, actually, no, I should say your music, I really loved your music because uh, with the complete uh, album, Christmas album, uh, I have to say a lot of the songs on there, wow, uh, they turned out much better than I anticipated. Because like you said, they are different from the usual Christmas music. I mean, uh, how many times can we hear somebody just cover the same song every single time? You know, we heard almost every artist on the planet sing Jingle Bells or, you know, uh, you know, uh, Frosty the Snowman, but... You came up with a really original lyrics for your work. Thank you. Yeah, I was trying really hard. <laughs> and I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to figure out oh, how can I make this humorous? Like Elfie under my tree, you know? And um uh, th the cute version and the sexy version. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd add both. <laughs> See what would happen, you know. I, I think so because I don't know, it's like you have one for what audience, the little kids, the LP version, which is cute. It showcases your voice talents. And then you have the other one, which, you know, the adults want to hear. So that's really cool, I thought. And and also, um, probably the best song in the whole track, uh, Fa La La Bling Blues. Oh, you like that one? I, ha I have to listen to that song every time I go out on Black Friday because Black Friday is... It's, it's hell on earth. <laughs> and when I listen to that song, it makes me tolerate it more because it is a lot of stress to, to, you know, trying to get the best bargains in the morning and fighting the crowds. But I have that uh, on full blast on my iPod <laughs> with my, uh, head, my headphones, and I need it. It's a, it's a way to soothe me and relax me during such a stressful event. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Well, that's good. It, it that's is. why I wrote the song because it's just so crazy how people, you know, run up their credit cards for these gifts. Yeah, right. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, God, and and people get trampled over it, and they're they're beating each other up to get the best items. I mean, yeah, uh, and they're spending it's been, and they're spending a lot of cash, uh, more so than they usually do. And I guess it's bargains and all that. But uh, yeah. you know, all your songs there are great. And but of course, I think your music went to a, a new level when you introduced Dreamers. Now. With Dreamers, how did that come along? I mean, we all—I I know the story, but for you, how did it come along for you? And why did you want to do something in dedication not only people who, who want to be more than they can they can be, and of course, uh, pay a little tribute to all the Dreamers of the of the past and future, most notably Obama. Well, um, well, first, first, I, I kept hearing from people all about the dreams that they wanted to achieve, but all these obstacles would always come up like either they were too afraid or they didn't think they were talented enough or something came up where they just gave up and I was trying to write a song for all those people to say hey don't give up like 
it, it, you just got to keep going. You just got to keep going and going and going. And, and you might think that there's never going to be an end to this, but there is. It's just around that, that corner, just before you give up. That's where it happens, and you, you start to achieve your dream. So really, it was, it was written because I just wanted to inspire people just to keep going because too many people give up, and there's so many talented people out there that, that give up too soon. And the reason I put Obama in the video is because at the time I was writing the song, that was when he was actually trying to become president, right? He, he wasn't elected yet as president. I remember that. And everybody, it, it was a big discussion. Wow, like this is the first person, the first African-American that has ever tried to achieve this goal. Can he do it? And everybody was on the internet watching this. You know, I, I can't vote, so it, it, I'm not American, so it was nothing about that. It, it, I wasn't trying to get people to vote for him or against him. No, I was, uh, the dream. Yeah, we, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that Dreamers to me never, uh, you know, said it was a political song. It never spoke to me like that. It was more about just achieving dreams, not a political song. Yeah, I thought that he was really making a statement as a dreamer, and I was really inspired by that. So that's really why. That's how it came to be. That's nice, and I really like the song itself. And, and he even released, um, I think there's two versions of the song. One is a techno remix, I believe. And the other is the normal version. Unless I'm getting it mixed up with another? No, that w I had the, um, the normal, the original version, and then I did a radio mix. Radio mix. And I think, oh yeah, just like you did with The Day Is Mine, right? Uh, this Day Is Mine is more of a dance remix. Dance remix, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember. Radio remix, and I did that just to make sure because uh, it was a bit too long for radio, the original version of Dreamers. So then I just had the producers switch it up a bit so it was a little bit shorter for radio airplay. Oh, interesting. What did they consider too long? Was it longer than three minutes? The original version? Um, I'm trying to remember now. I, I believe so. I think 3:20 is a good is a good time limit for radio. It is. It, I believe 3:23 was uh, for this day is mine. Ah. Dream, Dreamers was a four minute song, four minutes and ten seconds or something the like original that. Original version. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it, yeah, that's. True. Oh, so I have the long version. <laughs> the long version that I downloaded from you, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and. It's a really nice song, too. Thank you. It is. I mean, it really t it helps get my mood up. Uh, you know, some, well, like you said, I think the world is a bit too pessimistic now. I don't know wh why that is, but um, it's a very downbeat era we live in. And your music really helps, you know, bring that spirit back up. You know, some more people need optimism in their lives. I know, I know it's easy to be cynical. But it's really more of a challenge to be optimistic and positive. You're right. You're absolutely right. It is, and I, I'm probably one of the few optimistic people out there. I keep some people keep telling me, "How come you always see the bright side of things?" My only response to them is, "Well, somebody has to." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, why are they it, looking at the negative side of things? <laughs> I don't know. It, it's really strange. I guess my friends are just cynical like that. I don't know, but you know, I'm like, wow, if you were just um, you know sad and depressed and stuff, how come you still have fun anyway? You see, there's always something in your life that makes you happy, you know. Yeah. Maybe they're just maybe they're just being silly or self-hypocritical. I don't know. I don't, it's hard to say. Yeah. They're just them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and of course, lastly, the Magic of Think album. Now, here's where I can say maybe. Well, is it fair to say that the Magic of Think is your most uh, successful album in terms of creativity? I would say it's an album that I'm the most proud of. Because it's helping kids. Yes. And it was inspired through an experience I had through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And yeah. that was when several children had made their one wish. 
to meet all of us in the cast and crew in Ed, Ed, and Eddie, the animated series. That's nice. And I just couldn't believe they had made their one wish to meet all of us. And I just thought, what is, what is it about this cartoon and all of us that was so important to them? And that was when I realized, hey, you know, the power and the impact and the influence that cartoons and make-believe characters, characters can have on a child's life, that's amazing. So what if I could create characters that were empowering characters that kids develop courage and confidence right, and help them deal with bullying and doubt? So then that's how the magic was born. And it's a good way to get it started because uh, these days with kids and the Make a Wish Foundation, it, it, it's sad on one hand, but you know they also have they come up with these amazing uh, requests uh, to who to meet, and mm -hmm. and I'm glad this uh, this child picked you and the rest of the cast met at Nettie because well, there were uh, it, actually four it, kids it, at different times. four kids wow yeah I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's like they all grouped up and then you know had this little idea and, and fantastic idea at that yeah. <laughs> And it's, it's nice because um, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, I don't know too much about it aside from I know that, well, I watch professional wrestling and I know that Make-A-Wish always, uh, kids always make you know requests to see those professional wrestlers all the time. And it's nice to have their dreams come true. And with your album, you can do just that and telling everyone to just, you know, hang in there. You're, you're, you're great because you're you and all that. And I really like that. Thank you. Yeah, and it's it, there is a bigger picture to this. Like I started with the music CD, and mm -hmm. uh, oh, and one of the songs on that children's CD that's the one I did a dance remix of. This day is mine. Yes, I remember. And it won best song at the Hollywood Music and Media Awards, which was so cool. Yeah, I remember that. I, was, I couldn't be any happier for you because you fi like finally you'd, music gets recognized um, much you know on a higher scale this time. It must have been really great experience for you. Like how how did you feel when you when you heard you won for the first time? Well, I thought I kind of looked around and said, "Did they say my name?" Like I I was in total <laughs> shock. I was in total shock. I was eating. Because they had a dinner there, right? So I was eating. I was thinking, well, I'm not going to win, you know. I'm just eating away. And all of a sudden, they say my name. And I look at them, what? <laughs> and they said my name again. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's a surreal moment. <laughs> but, uh, it was just unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. And, and when you went up there, did you do um, an acceptance speech or something? Or you just picked it up and... <laughs> I did it on the fly, yeah, because I really wasn't expecting to win. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, who was in attendance that day? Were your family and uh, all your friends? No, actually, I went. I flew down there, um, and I was by myself. But there was a bunch of people at my table that I met that have since become my friends. Um, they were all nominated. So, uh, you know, other musicians in different categories, mm -hmm. classical music, rock, um, other pop artists. So really, a, a lot of the people at that award show were other artists, producers, people like that in the music industry. There weren't too many of the family members or friends there. You know what I mean? It was mainly a industry type of affair oh nice so it was just you and um you know your uh the company the industry there. yeah the uh, representative that's right oh that's that's pretty cool and to see you win uh let's put a smile on their faces <laughs> yeah yeah, it's yeah wow it's really cool um and now we can do a little bit of chit chat like for example janice what are your interests besides uh singing and songwriting and voice acting voting Boating. <laughs> I love being on the water. And um, I love watching films. And oh, you have, you have any specific favorites? Oh. Hmm. I'll have to come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you go, okay, keep going. <laughs> um, I, I really like working out in the gym with weights. I don't know why, but I like doing that. 
Uh, hey, hey, if you want to uh, work out your biceps, uh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you want to be um, you want to be fit, like um, a little bit muscular, I guess. I just want to be toned. Toned, right? Yeah, you you look good for your age, by oh, the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, every time I see you in those dresses, my God, <laughs> <laughs> like like really, Janice, you're beautiful, and oh, I think all your fans say the same thing too. I mean, they're like, "Wow, you know, you don't you look very young still." You must get a lot of comments like that. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, w- I don't no, know. I sound like I'm flattering you. I wish I'm. I, I don't know. It's hard, but it sounds like I'm flattering you. But it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, it's just amazing. Um, and of course. Uh, oh, I have to tell you about my limited offer. Oh yeah, tell me. Well, um, with the magic of think, if you go to the website, I'm offering this limited offer where if you purchase the physical CD of The Magic of Think, I will send you a personalized MP3 from the Panda Bear Coochie Coo. And it could be a birthday wish or a congratulations to someone or encouraging words, things like that. Oh, yeah, I remember this. And you said that maybe you can do a personal message to that specific person, whatever you want uh, Coochie Coo to say. That's right. That's right. I have to limit it to two sentences, though. Otherwise, I'll be recording day and night. Um, (laughs) Yeah, you don't want to say like a whole paragraph or something. (laughs) Now, the two sentences could be long, but, you know, whatever. But um, (laughs) this this will actually help me a lot. Um, So any fans out there, if you can help me by, like, supporting me by buying the CD, I'll, in exchange give you this personalized mp3 from the panda bear who uh it's coochie corny who sounds like this <laughs> really cute panda bear and it'll help me because what i want to do with this is make the magic think a really huge thing which um you see i'm working towards an ebook i want to do an interactive ebook to help children again with uh, developing courage, so it's all based around that, and the focus is to is to hopefully help these kids. Well, I know it'll help these kids achieve their dreams. I always felt that the um, Magic of Think website could use a little bit more interactivity. I think you know something for the kids to do while they're on the site. Ah, good point. You know, yeah, yeah, like uh, maybe pop up games. Yeah, learning wise, if you want to do that. Um, interactive storybooks, or or even um, uh, you know, little uh, little sound bites for them to click on, and they can hear their characters speak to them. You know, something like that. Okay. Yeah, if you if you know a uh, good graphics designer or someone that can implement you know flash games on on the website, you should really try that. Okay, that's a great idea. Yeah, any feedback any feedback like that? Because right now I'm just creating a new site as we speak. Oh yeah. So everything is moving, you know, at a slow pace, but you know, you got to get there and collect all many ideas as possible. That's right. So you hear that everybody? Uh and now Janice will tell you exactly where you can contact her and every website she's on. Okay. So for the children's CD and the personalized MP3 from the Panda Bear Coochie Coo, it's the magic of think.com. And then for my Christmas music and pop music, it's Janice.com, and that's J-A-N-Y-S-E dot com. And I also have a voiceover site, which is my full name, J-A-N-Y-S-E-J-A-U-D dot com. No spaces. No spaces. <laughs> or you can go to and- MagicalVoice.com, which actually goes to my music site as well. And, and don't forget her um, uh, Facebook. Oh, yeah, my Facebook. That's- yeah, her Facebook. Oh, my God. <laughs> and even the Magic of Think has a Facebook now, right? I'm just working on that. Yeah, I've just got a page up, but I also have to do a separate page that's completely just, I got, I'm still working on that. But I do have a page, the Magic of Think, uh, that is off of my own Janice's Facebook page. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, yes. Okay. I believe the, the uh, 
This site is under my first and last name on Facebook, though. Uh, don't worry, because um, in the video, when I upload this, I'm going to put all your links there for them to click on, if that's okay with oh, you. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, excellent. And I'll put the links not only on the video itself, but also in the description box. So it's like they can't miss them. No matter <laughs> I don't know if you're blind or something, you can't miss the links. Okay. So, <laughs> so remember that, people. Remember to check out all the sites and, and like her on Facebook and become her friend because she is very, very nice to everybody and very interactive and friendly and... I'm really promoting you, aren't I? Yeah, <laughs> like I should crazy. hire you. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, you should. I should be, I'm a good travel agent or agent. Wait, what do they call it? Ah, whatever. <laughs> but the point, point, point is you all will enjoy a great time with Janice if you add her on your Facebook right now. So don't forget to check out those websites. Okay. And, and now, Janice, um, one the last thing I'd like to do before we close this up. Sure. Um, well, I'd like to have a little uh, voice acting, uh, little you know, chit chat with you. Sure. Like, like, be- yeah, like a, yeah, because I enjoyed, I enjoyed you doing it on that last show. I'm like, oh, let's, I want to give that a try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, can, can I? Okay, let's first just, you know, do anything. Just say anything. Okay, um, so let's just start, you know, talking. Okay. Um, I'll use one of my OC characters that I made up. Uh, he's called Chris the Puppet Boy, and he, he's um, okay. He's really foul mouth, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have the censored version of him for your show. So like, um, so let's see. Scenario: Ordering a pizza. Okay. Ah, oh, darn it! I can't order a pizza at this hour. Oh, well, can't, Everything is closed. Why can't you order a pizza at this hour? What are you talking about? Ah. All the stores are closed. They won't deliver here past 11. What are we going to do about this? Make your own pizza, buddy. <laughs> make my own pizza? What are you talking about? I can't make my own pizza. Sure, you just make some spaghetti and you add some cheese. Sp- spaghetti? There's, there's, there's spaghetti on pizza? Yes, it's a uh, very French way of doing the pizza. Ah, uh, well, uh, I guess that could work. All right, ingredients. Um, uh, spaghetti. Ah, spaghetti? Uh, it's all crunchy. Ah, let's just use it anyway. Next. Um, mozzarella cheese. Ah, mozzarella cheese. <laughs> and it's fresh. <laughs> uh, and now, next and last final ingredient. Ah, let me think. What could be put on this pizza? Mmm. How about some wonderful chocolate? Oh, chocolate? Yeah. Now that could work. That would work really well. <laughs> I love chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> mix, 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 mix. Put it in. Into the oven. And we're done. Now, the taste test. You first. And don't make a mess of things now. Okay. Mmm. Oh, I love it. <laughs> really? It's good? It's fantastic. All right. <laughs> Let me try. Ow. Mm. This is amazing. I just... <laughs> oh, my God. Goodness, what's in what's this? The what's, what's happening to you? Uh, it, I think it, maybe it, that you swallowed it the wrong way. That's what I think. Are you okay? Do I look okay? I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> I have to say you're doing pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. This is not pizza! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was good, Shanice. <laughs> God, and, and not only that, you played off me well. I mean, <laughs> I, I just made up things on the go, but I, I liked it. That was cute. I really did. That was cute. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and perfect line delivery. Excellent. Wow. <laughs> This is a dream to be doing that with you because I never thought I'd be, you know, doing any kind of voice role with you. So that's really nice. Thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. That was fun. Um, is there? Uh, but I have one more request, if you don't mind. Oh, no problem. Uh, 
Okay, now as as myself, um, could I do a little short scene with you as Kagura? Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, mm -mm, just trying to uh, score a date with her. <laughs> the, that's the whole scenario. Okay. Hi, Kagura. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, I was wondering if you'd like, um, well, uh, oh, this is embarrassing for me to say, but... Why is that? Will you please go out with me this Friday? Well, it depends where you take me. Well, I was thinking that we can go over to the shop and buy you a new fan. It looks like that one is covered in blood. Well, that's a possibility. If you're nice to me, I might even let you ride on my feather. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, so let's get going. Okay, now we're at the fan shop. Hey, Kagura, what do you think of this one? Mm, not my type. Try again. Really? Oh, uh, all right. No, not this one. Hey. Hmm. I really like this one. That one looks nice, but don't you go for the more reddish magenta ones? I sure do. All right, then. Let's uh, pay for them, shall we? Are you going to get me. one for yourself? Uh, sure, why not? Um, hey, I have a good idea. Why don't you help me decide? Okay. All right. Look at this one. It has a mm. spider on it. Hmm, that's nice. It reminds me of the spider on your back. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll need something to think of you every night from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Not like I already do, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now they're uh, da, da, da. okay. Now they're looking at the moonlight on top of the feather. <laughs> Geez, Kagura, it's pretty high up here. You sure this thing is stable? It's extremely stable. You don't have to worry about a thing when you're with me. I guess I should feel very comfortable right now, should You I? should. Now, is the moonlight just absolutely wonderful? It is. And now you're free, thanks to me taking care of Naraku for you. It was nothing. Oh, I can't tell you how, how important this is to me. And I am indebted to you for life. Absolutely indebted to you. I, I just don't know what to say. Well, there is one thing you can say to me, Kagura. Yeah, what's that? Just tell me you love me. Oh, I love you. I oh do. I love you too. Oh, wow, that was great. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, look at me. I'm red. I never turn red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was amazing. We should do this again, but with the script next time. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, it can, yeah, I mean, wow, this is great. But, oh, God, Jenny's thanking me. I consider that a gift, which you just did for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> because, you know, I'm in love with the character, like, literally. So it's like, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for interviewing me. This has been great. It has, and honestly, this is probably the best uh, show I've ever had. I mean, usually I have podcasts with my friends or um, or uh, members from other uh, communities and groups, but I think this one was my favorite because it was only a one-on-one. -on -one. I never do one-on-ones. -on it's usually a, a group, but I do. Really? But yeah, but this time it's you know one-on-one, -on -one and it's more personal, more you know down. You know, I just love it. Thank you so much for this interview. Jenny. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, no, I really appreciate you taking the time. Excellent. And to close out this show, uh, tell everybody um, that this is uh, this is you and this is me. And to catch this uh, podcast on Loose Sky Sapphire on YouTube account. Yeah, you heard it, Loose Sky Fire. No. <laughs> <laughs> Take it slowly <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from the top. What do you want me to say, Dad? No, I'm red. <laughs> uh, okay, um, just say, um, this is Janice John and Loose Sky Sapphire saying good night, everybody. Okay, this is yeah. Janice Jean and Lou Sky Sapphire saying <laughs> say good night. And we miss good. you and we 